is Les Titford and I'm going to help you get started on this fantastic instrument which is the Black Diamond 60 bass uh, B system chromatic button accordion which is quite a mouthful um, but it is a great instrument. Uh, I'm not going to assume any prior knowledge uh, in this tutorial uh, so we'll get started right away. The first thing you're going to want to do is to make sure that you've attached the straps to the instrument. I'm just going to turn this round here and show you uh, how that's done. Top and bottom. Okay. Getting your strap heights is very important. Um, this is the right shoulder strap, this is the left shoulder strap, and um, I've had to set my uh, right shoulder strap shorter than my left shoulder strap. Uh, you may find uh, that that works for you or you may find you'll have them equal. Obviously we're all different shapes and sizes and uh, you'll need to experiment with this to get it so it's really comfortable for you. So let's just turn the instrument around so it's around the right way. Um, make sure that it's sitting on your lap like this, okay? Um, and make sure the straps aren't twisted, okay? And what I tend to do is I just put it on my lap like this and I put my left arm through the left shoulder strap and my right arm to the right shoulder strap and then just lift it up. If you find it sort of dragging or pulling on your body a bit then you might try putting one leg over the other uh, and then you've got a nice support for the instrument. Okay, um, I tend to play so that the right hand uh, keyboard is uh, just about there, just over my right leg and the, the sort of weight of the instrument is on my left leg like that. Okay, and obviously if, it, if this doesn't feel right, if it feels loose, then take it off and adjust the straps. Um, I would recommend sitting playing to start with. Um, this weighs about 14 pounds, this instrument, so it's not incredibly heavy, but uh, if you are a beginner and you are spending hours practicing, uh, you're going to get tired very quickly, so definitely be seated, be comfortable, and sit in a chair like I'm sitting that doesn't have any arms, uh, so that your arms are free to move around. So the left hand strap, sometimes called the bass strap, uh, is um, adjusted by means of this rotella or this dial on the top here. And you need to get it right. If it's too loose then your hand's going to flop around and if it's too tight uh, you're going to feel very constricted. Uh, your left hand has got two jobs. Obviously one job is to push the bellows in and out and the other job is to play these bass buttons. So again, getting that strap tension is really crucial. Okay, and don't worry if you don't get it right to start with, you can always experiment with it and, and alter it as we go. Now, you're almost ready to go, except we've got to undo the straps that hold the bellows in. There's one on the top, put it off, park it over there, and this is where you have to reach underneath and my shoulder strap nearly always falls off just like that and you park that one there now your bellows are free, put your shoulder strap back on so a lot of re readjusting, resettling, getting comfortable the other classic of course is, and I've done this loads of times especially in my videos is to get the strap caught across the, the buttons here make sure the strap, particularly that right hand strap is underneath or around the back of the instrument and then you're ready to go. Now if you want to get a feel for uh, opening and closing the bellows there is a button here uh, if you push it in and just put some pressure pull outwards and then you're here and you can see can't you, the bellows pulling out okay now if you release that button try and push the bellows you'll notice they won't shut so if you want to shut them again push the button in and you can close the bellows. Um, I have done a separate video that explains the kind of workings uh, of the chromatic button recording. That's a, a, a 30 minute plus video and you can find that on my YouTube channel which is Green Plectrum Films. Uh, but this uh, video is all about starting to play the instrument. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Now to get started I thought it would be good 
uh, to play a tune that you're probably going to know, which is Frère Jacques, um, a famous French folk song. And the good thing about this tune is that it only needs one chord uh, behind it, and the chord we're going to play is C. We'll come to that in a moment. Let's uh, have a look at the, uh, the music of Frère Jacques, a look at the page with Frère Jacques on it. There's a lot of uh, writing on it. It looks a bit, uh, looks a bit scary, doesn't it? Uh, but it's all very logical and I'm going to go through it bit by bit with you so that you'll understand it. It says at the top of the page that this is a, a nice easy one chord tune in the key of C major. If you don't know what that means, well don't worry about that. It's really not, nothing to worry about. But you're going to be counting in fours and I'm sure you realise that means going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, all the right hand notes are found on white buttons. So you can see on the right hand here, lots of the buttons are white, a lot of them are black. Uh, and by the way, they correspond to white and black notes on a piano keyboard. So if you're a, um, a pianist or a keyboard player, uh, you might find that pretty helpful. More of that later. Uh, and it says the left hand bass note is C, at row four dimple. Okay. So row four dimple means count one, two, three, four, four rows in, and then this note here, press it in, and pull the bellows out. That's the C bass note, and the C major chord that we're going to use that goes with it is um, on row three, coming up along the diagonal. It's a bass note and bass chord. But we're going to get to that a bit later. I'm going to go into that in far more detail a bit later on. Just look at the very bottom of the page and it says notes used in this tune as found on the Black Diamond 60 bass uh, B system chromatic button accordion. Okay, um, please note row one is the row nearest the outside. So basically this instrument has five rows of treble notes, treble buttons. So this is row one, row two, row three is the middle row, Row four and row five is the one nearest these switches. We're only going to play notes on rows one, two and three in this tune, so you won't have to worry about these two rows. Um, and when I'm talking about button one um, being nearest the chin end, well there's your chin, so this end of the instrument is known as the chin end, this end is known as the knee end, so button one um, uh, for instance, if it says row two, button one, that's this row, this button, okay? And that is the note G, okay? We'll get into how to play that, how to make that sound in a moment. Just want you to understand uh, the sort of terminology so you can find your way around the sheet. Let's just identify the notes that are found in the tune. So my bellows are shut, okay? All I'm going to do with my left hand is just pull and push the bellows in and out. I'm not going to play any of these bass buttons for the moment. So the first note down there, right at the bottom of the page, is called G, and it says it's row two, and it's button one. There's this white note here. So if I just press the button, nothing, nothing happens, does it? I've got to pull the bellows out as I do it, or push the bellows in. And you can hear a kind of a beating sound there. That's because I've got this white switch engaged, uh, and that means we've got two reeds sounding. And that's explained in that other video that I mentioned. So that's G, that's the lowest note in the tune. Uh, the next note up from that that we use is a note of C. And it's row three, button two. Notice you get the same note whether you push or pull the bellows. That's because this instrument is called a unisonoric instrument. Same note in both directions. That's a, that's a bit of a plus of this instrument because um, other instruments you get different notes in, with different directions of the bellows, like the melodeon. The next note up is D, which is row one. That's the outside row, button three. <laughs> Next highest one is row two, button four. Then we have F, which is row one, button four. 
G, which is row two, bottom five. And A, which is row three, that's the middle row, bottom five. So from lowest to highest, here are the notes that are used in the tune Ferro Jacca. This isn't the actual tune, if you like, this is the ingredients to make our cake. So we have G, C, D, E, F, G, and A. And as you can see, as we're kind of zigzagging across diagonally, the notes are climbing in pitch or getting higher pitched. Okay? So those are the seven notes um, that we find in the tune Frere Jacca, and they're all found in the scale of C major. Um, I've arranged this tune in this key because there are no sharp notes, there are no black buttons to worry about, keeping it really, really simple to start with. Okay, now you don't have to start with the bellows closed, but you'll notice I'm tending to uh, push the bellows closed each time. Um, and that is because when we get to play the tune properly, we are going to uh, pull the bellows out for two bars, push them in for two bars, pull them out for two bars, and push them in for two bars. And if you don't know what a bar is, well, it's four beats of music. So uh, at the top of the page there, the first eight notes, uh, they are split across two bars of music. And there are four beats in each bar. Right, so let's start playing the actual tune now. If you don't read music, don't panic because it's really, really simple. Uh, if you look at the top of the page, um, underneath the title and underneath that little box we're writing in, you've got your first two bars of music. You'll see the first thing on the left hand side is that rather uh, beautiful sign which is called the treble clef. Okay, that's nothing for you to worry about. Uh, that just sets the notes at a certain pitch. As I say, nothing to worry about. Then it says four over four. That means you're going to be counting in four beats of the bar. Uh, the number four on top is the one that really counts. The one underneath, well, I could explain that to you, but I'm not going to for the moment because I don't want to confuse you. So if you see four over a four, all you've got to remember is to count four beats in each bar. It doesn't mean to say that there will necessarily be four notes in each bar. Sometimes there'll be less, sometimes more and we'll get to that a bit later. As it happens, the first two bars of music do have four notes in each bar, so each note is worth one beat. Um, now, as to the actual notes themselves, some of them are drawn on top or in between those five lines. Those five lines are called a stave. Some are underneath. Now, the very first note, uh, the note of C, is drawn on an extra little line, which is called a ledger line, just underneath the stave. That's how you can recognise it. So you look at the look at the head of the note, that's the kind of egg-shaped thing at the bottom, and it has an extra line going through it. It's a little bit of an extra line called a ledger line. Okay, um, now it says right hand fingering, and it says one. Now, uh, this is the way I'm going to uh, number my right hand. Uh, the thumb, I'm going to call T. The index finger is 1, the middle finger is 2, and the ring finger is 3. And if I use it, although I'm not in this tune, uh, the little finger will be 4. And, and that is actually marked in that box very near the bottom of the page, if you look. So that first note, C, and you may recall that C is uh, row 3, button 2, this note here. I'm going to start off by using my index finger on that note. By the way, all the notes are named on top, so it, it reminds you that note is a C. You won't normally have that in normal music, but I've done it to help you out here, so we know it's a note of C, and I've written the letter C on top. Now the next note is a D, and the D is row one, button three, and you can see there's a T underneath that, meaning thumb. So, let's just close our bellows for a moment and play the C with the index finger and the D with the thumb. So the C was on the middle row and the D was on the 
fertile, the outside bow. Now we want the note E, okay, which is row two, button four, and it's finger two, or if you like, the middle finger. Okay, so let's close the bellows again. It's a bit of a palaver. You don't have to do that, but I'm just doing it to keep it tidy. Let's we've got C, index finger, D with the thumb, tuck it inside, and E with finger two, the middle finger. And then you go back to C, and you use your first finger again. So it's your frere Jacques, you can hear that quite clearly, can't you? Let's play those four notes, that's our first bar. And the second bar is the same. Now, if you're observant and you're looking at your right hand, you may notice as you play some notes, other buttons are going down in different rows. And that's because those notes are duplicated in other rows. Um, we'll get to that a bit later on. Uh, don't let that worry you. Just basically ignore it for the time being. Okay? So the first two bars of music um, are the same. C, D, E, C. C, D, E, C. Okay? And you're counting, you can see it underneath, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Underneath that it says left hand, bass note, major chord, bass note, major chord, bass note. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I just want to get you up and running with this tune first of all. Let's um, listen to those first two bars again. Now you notice all the while I was playing those notes, I was pulling the bellows out. I'll show you that again. I'm just going to close the bellows. Don't be in a hurry to close the bellows. It doesn't do the instrument too much good. Okay. So bellows closed. And as you... Press the buttons, just gradually pull out. So we have. Now that's our first two bars. Now bellows are nicely open, and you, if it's if you find it tiring, just let the, the bellows droop down for the moment. That's fine. And you completed what we call our first stave of music. Okay, right. Just so you know, the C, as I say, was on the ledger line underneath the stave. The D was in the space underneath the stave, and the E was on the first line of the stave, or the bottom line of the stave. Now, on the second stave, it says push bellows in. So as we play these notes, we're going to be pushing the bellows in, okay? And these are the notes. Well, we've got E, which we've already played. We know that we've got E on row two, button four, okay? And we've got an F, which is row one, button four, and we have G, which is row two, button five. Uh, so we've got okay, and I was pushing the bellows in so they are now more or less closed. Let's pull the bellows out again, so we get the right movement. Now it says index finger on the E, thumb on the F. Finger two on the G, so it's a nice little, nice little triangle, isn't it? Okay. Now, if you look at the G note, you'll notice that the head or the egg part of it is not filled in, and that's because it's got a different value. Uh, all the notes so far have been one-beat notes, or if you like, crotchets. They're called. This is a two-beat note. It's called a minim, so it lasts twice as long as the others. So you can see the counting is one, two, three, four. So that G lasts for beat three and beat four. And bar four, or the second bar of that second stave, is the same as bar three. So it's the same thing twice again, isn't it? So stave two has two bars that are identical. And as we play the notes, we push the bellows in because we pulled them out for the first stave. Now, it's a good um, opportunity now to start again. Uh, your bellows are closed. So try those first four bars, your first two staves. And I'll count you in. You can play along with me if you like. I'm going to count you in with a four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that 
that's the first part of the tune, Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, Dormez vous, Dormez vous. Now, the Sonne le Matina bit is a little bit harder. This is the third stave. It says pull bellows out. That works, doesn't it? Because you've pushed them shut playing that second stave. And we have a little bit of a faster section here. We're cramming more notes. Remember I said earlier, four beats of the bar doesn't necessarily mean four notes in the bar. And you can see these next two bars have actually got six notes in each bar. Uh, the first four notes are all joined together uh, and they are called quavers. They're only half a beat each. So they're going to be a bit quicker. And then you've got two crotchets. So the notes themselves are G, A, G, F, E, C. Okay, uh, I'm going to shut the bellows get the, so I get the bellow direction right for you. So we have. Okay, counting as you can see underneath is one and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. G, A, G, F, E, C. G, A, G, F, E, C. Those are the names of the notes. And the fingering is crucial. A lot of people, when they start off with instruments, they will play, try and play it with one finger. Uh, it's not a great idea. Right from the get-go, right from the beginning, use the right fingers. Um, you may develop different fingering patterns to me. This is only my suggestion as to what works for this tune. So the G, you're going to use finger two. And notice this is not the G we started with. It's actually an octave above that one. Okay. So G with finger two. Uh, A with finger three. You haven't used finger three or the ring finger. Back to the G. Now the F we're going to use our thumb on that. And then we're going to use our second finger on the E. So we're going to sort of dance across to the E with our second finger. And we're going to come down to that C note with our index finger. Okay. And like the other two staves, uh, the two bars in this stave are identical. It's the same thing twice, if you like. So we have... Okay, I'm going to slow that down for you because that's pretty fast, isn't it? So we have G, A, G, F, E, C. G, A, G, F, E, C. Okay, uh, and now I'll do it at the proper speed. And we have. Pulling the bellows out, so the bellows are now out. And we're going to finish our tune now. By the way, incidentally on that on that stave, that the G note is on the second line up of the stave. The A is in the space between line two and line three of the stave. Um, so you're getting a feel for uh, where the notes appear on the stave. Um, Think of the stavers as like a series of uh, shelves stacking the notes on them. The higher the notes you stacked on the shelf, uh, the higher it sounds. Counting one and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. Now the last stave, um, two bars the same. So it's a nice tune to start with, isn't it? It's a very, very uniform kind of tune. And the notes are C, G, C. C, G, C. Now you've ended on C at the end of the previous stave, this note here with the index finger. So you're simply going to play C, G, C, C, G, C. Index finger, thumb, index finger. And the notes are crotchet, crotchet, minimum. Or if you like, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the first two notes come on the first two beats of the bar and the third note comes on beat three and lasts for all of beat three and all of beat four. Um, so let's play you the whole tune, not worrying about playing any bass for the moment, simply playing the right hand tune. Um, so I'm going to st start at the top, bellows are shut, and I'm going to count you in. Don't worry if you can't keep up, practice it and practice it, and then when you think you can do it, then try and play along with me. Here we go then, one, two, three, four. So, 
that is a nice little tune, instantly recognisable, and uh, as I say, do try and use the right fingers and the right bellows directions. It's all good training to get you started. Uh, once you feel like you've managed that, then uh, go to the next part of the lesson where we're going to be putting in some left hand, some accompaniment. I always think it's really exciting when you're starting off learning a new instrument. Uh, and in, a lot of people um, say it's like going on a journey, and it, it really is. And it becomes quite a familiar journey as you practice day by day. But really good fun and you know, regular practice um, is the only way if you really want to get somewhere with any instrument. Uh, and then you'll soon see some results. So let's put in the left hand bass. Now I've kept this really simple. Uh, it's a one chord tune. So we're going to simply play one chord all the way through. What we're actually going to do, we're going to play a bass note and a bass chord. Now, like I said earlier, the C bass is on the fourth row and it's the one with the dimple. Okay, so that's, you can hear it's a single note. You can hear it's actually uh, it's the same note an octave apart, but essentially it's a single note, it's a C note. Okay. And the C major chord that's going to go with it is um, on row 3 and diagonally above it. So there's the bass note, there's the bass chord. Now, use your uh, ring finger on the C bass and use your middle finger on the major chord. So ring finger on the C bass note and then use your uh, middle finger on the C major chord. So the major chord, you can hear that's a complex sound, uh, three different sounds at the same time, three different notes played at the same time. So a chord is if you like lots of notes played at the same time. So you've got your classic, what we call the um pa. Um is the bass note, the pa is the chord. And that's what you're going to do all the way through. Nice and short. Now, some people find the bass harder. Uh, this is called a stradella bass, by the way. Again, explained in my other video. Because the buttons are quite small and quite fiddly. Okay, So it does take sometimes uh, quite a while to find the bass notes. Once, you, once you're on them, if you stay on them, uh, you know, you'll find you shouldn't get too badly lost. So let's shut the bellows and they'll give you an idea of the sort of the pace of this or the speed. So you've got C bass, C, C major chord, bass chord, bass chord, like that. And shut. Terribly exciting, I know, but if we put the right hand with it, it should sound pretty good. Basically, your bass note comes on beat one, uh, your major chord comes on beat two, your bass note comes again on beat three, and your major chord comes on beat four. So, obviously, in that uh, second stave, okay, uh, on the fourth beat, you're going to hear the major chord without a right hand note with it, okay. So, on that third stave, the most complicated of the, of the four staves, um, even though you've got six notes of the right hand in each bar, you've still only got your basic bass note major chord. Now, putting the two together can be a bit tricky at first. Let's show you how it should sound. Okay, so I'm going to count it in. Make sure I've got all my fingers right. Make sure I've got my bellows shut. Okay. I'm going to do a little experiment so you've got the right notes first of all. So this is what it should sound like. One, two, three, four. That's nice, isn't it? Should we try it again? Okay, we go. One, two, three, four.
So, it's going to take a bit of practicing if you're an absolute beginner uh, to get to that stage. Um, but that's a really good uh, first tune to play. Nice easy uh, left hand, just a single bass note, single chord all the way through. So you haven't got to uh, move your, your left hand fingers around. So once you've found your dimpled bass note and your major chord. And the right hand, all white buttons. And uh, as I say, if you stick to the fingering I suggested, uh, then you'll find that after a while you won't even have to look at the buttons and that's probably a good idea to train yourself to do that. A word about practicing, don't go on for hours and hours and hours because you'll find you'll get very worn out very very quickly. Um, lots of breaks, lots of cups of tea, cups of coffee. Uh, once you finish playing it's probably a good idea if the bellows aren't shut to shut them with your air button and do your straps up, okay, uh, keep the bellows closed and that way uh, the instrument stays safe uh, in between practices. So that is the end of lesson number one, a very long lesson. Um, I hope you enjoyed it uh, and uh, I hope you're going to get on the right and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson where we're going to learn another tune with probably two chords in it. See you then.